guys, so welcome back. We are now going to pick up where we left off in the last video where we were talking about reviewing and revising standards. So what I said last, last time in the last video was we have to be very careful in how we review and revise standards. By no means are just, sorry, standards should not be adjusted because maybe an employee or a facility missed their target right? Be just because you did not reach your, I, your standards um, because you maybe purchased too much material or what have you, that is not just cost for revising standards. However, as I mentioned before, if the minimum wage within um, a state starts to increase and all of your standards were based on the prior um, minimum wage, then yes, a standard, your standard must be reviewed and revised to reflect your new, um, your new experience, right? Your new, um, where are you, wherever you at. Um, other reasons why standards should be revised is when prices, product design, labor rates, or manufacturing methods change. We're talking about major changes, right? So in those cases, that is when we would revise standards. All right, so let's talk about some criticisms of, um, of standards, okay? So some of the criticisms that um, standards receive is one, it limits the operating improvements by discouraging improvement beyond the standard. So what I will tell you is maybe you're not employee X, but if, employee, if you tell employee X to aim here, right? And maybe this is where you're telling them to aim, um, but outside of this circle, maybe you really like optimum performance is here right so if you tell employee x to aim here then employee x will aim directly here and go no further right they're not going to look for improvements they're not going to shoot for the stars they're not going to go for that second point because you have set the standard at hey i want you to hit that number one and that's it. So that's one of the criticisms of standards. It limits or discourages improvements beyond the standard. Two, um, sometimes it's too difficult to maintain standards in a dynamic manufacturing environment, meaning um, maybe the when we set those standards last year, right, um, it was sufficient. It held true to what we were doing. However, our environment has changed, right? So a perfect example of this is COVID-19. I'm sure we all are probably tired of hearing about COVID-19 and the economy, but a lot of these companies set their standards and their budgets based on normal operating activities, normal buying power and things of that nature. However, we know that due to COVID-19, there has been a complete stop in business, right, for many, many, many stores. So as a result, um, the, the dynamics of the manufacturing process has changed, which makes the standard now stale, meaning it's out of use, it's no longer applicable to the current situation, right? Number two, number three, sorry. Employees can lose sight of the larger objectives of the organization by focusing only on efficiency improvements. So maybe just looking at, hey, what can I do um, to make this a little bit better, but they're not looking at the bigger picture. And then lastly, employee, employees only focus on their own operations to the possible harm of other operations that rely on them. So what, what I, what, what's meant by that is, say for instance, you have two different departments, right? Department A and department number B, right? So right now we're talking about department number A. Now department A is so concerned only with getting things right in their department that and they're focusing on perfection and things of that nature that if they do not do their part then department B can't do their part right and so the goal is to move product or move the process along but if you're always um you know focused on what you're doing only in your department, it can be very detrimental to the rest of the organization, right? It, you can't continue um, to, to move along in the process, okay? 
Now let's take a second and talk about budgetary performance evaluation. Now, hopefully this sounds very familiar, tracking back to chapter seven. We talked about budgetary um, budget performance in um, a little bit, so we'll, we'll expand on that more. But budgetary um, performance evaluation compares actual performance against the budget. Right. So we're looking at, hey, how did I do in comparison in comparison to what the budget said I should have done. Right. Um, so standards for direct materials, direct labor and factory overhead is separated into two components, standard price and standard quantity. So our standard cost per quantity is this. Um, sorry, is this this formula as follows. It's standard price times the standard quantity will give us the standard cost per unit. Now, if you're like, man, I don't get that, 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 that went over my head, no worries, stick with me and I'm gonna show you exactly what, what, how we are gonna navigate through this. So let's take, for example, we have this Western Rider Inc., a manufacturer of blue jeans, uses standard costs in its budget, okay? So here, um, Western Rider has already established that, hey, this is my standards for producing a pair of jeans, right? So in regards to, you know, we have our three manufacturing costs, as we all know, which is direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead. Now, these are the standards per pair of jeans, right? So the standard price, whenever we go out, so right now we're only focusing on direct materials. So whenever our purchasing team goes out to the supplier, the standard price for buying a piece of material is $5 per square yard, meaning they should pay no more than $5. That is the standard that we have set in the system, okay? And then also now when you're making the jeans, which so standard price deals everything with, um, or this part, standard price deals with buying um, like the supplier, okay? So you're going out to the supplier. Standard quantity, so to produce one pair of extra large jeans, it's the standard is causing calling for 1.5 square yards of um, square yards of material, right? So in that case, that is more so for the production team, right? So whenever they put things into production, they should use, they as in the assembly line should use no more than 1.5 square yards. Right, so if I did $5 times 1.5 square yards, that comes out to 7.5. Then we're gonna do the same thing for direct labor. Um, when we're making a pair of extra large jeans, the person that is assigned to this particular job should be paid no more than $9 per hour. Now, why, we'll get into why that may not be the case, and yes, all of that. Now, then when it comes to standard quantity per pair, we're saying um, as far as labor, we should pay this person no more than $9 per hour, and it should take them no more than 8.8 .8 hours to make a pair of jeans, right? So if we did $9 per hour times the 0.8 hours per pair, we come up with an amount of 720. We're going to do the same thing for factory overhead. Factory overhead, as a reminder, is your depreciation, your supervisors, your um, property taxes, insurance, so forth and so on. So when making a pair of jeans, it should be no more than $6 per hour, and it should take um, no more than 0.8 hours per pair. So that amount is $4.80. So when we combine all three of those things together, our direct material, direct labor, and factory overhead, and we look at the standard price as well as the standard quantity per pair, we're saying in order to make one pair of blue jeans, it should cost us $19.50. Okay, everybody with me. If it's more than that, then we're gonna have a variance. If it's less than that, we're gonna have a variance. And we'll talk about those variances in, in a second. All right, so here's a really good example for you guys to go through. So read through this um read through this particular example and see if you can figure out um the or determine the standard cost per dining room table so we have this um this manufacturer of home furniture and they have standard costs for our direct materials labor and factory overhead so when producing one 
um, dining room table, what is the standard cost given this information? Okay, so take a second, go through this, and what I'm gonna do is pick this example back up in the 